So these mind-blowing TikToks will make you question everything. So remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's go. Pyramids in Louisiana that's as old as Jesus. This is for entertainment purposes only. The burials in this 30 foot high mound began at the same time that Christ was Jesus born. Jesus Christ half himself! World away, 2,000, 2000 years ago. 2,000 years there are ago. There some very interesting alignments. When scientists mapped the Just alignments listen, of the mounds, Egypt they was found in America. a north south and east west orientation. The sun's gonna set down into, into X. And mounds that point to the summer and winter solstice. Come on now! I just cannot accept that that's coincidental. Indian burial mound. In Louisiana, the burial mound of the Marksville Indians was 90 feet in diameter, 21 feet high, and contained more than a thousand America. skeletons. Where are the skeletal remains of these people? This is a depiction of the ancient mounds 2,000 years yeah, ago before Christ. These mounds predict the movement of the moon, stars, and the sun, predicting the winter and summer Just solstice. listen! We already know what kind of people build equinoxes and solstices. So what we tell y'all, we know the truth. In Egypt, now. in America, where they had pyramids and knew the winter solstice and knew how to calculate the sun and the moon, and it wasn't connected to the Native Americans. We need y'all to start listening. Go start doing your own research. You feel me? And the people that was in the pyramids, we know who those people are. Smash, you can help me with this. Yeah. Smash, you can help me with this, right? So, who's this? This is... Who, what DAT is around there? That's new. That's new. And who holds up... Um, who's ho Who holds up Newt? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, we know. Well, let's just explain it. Newt being the night sky. Yes. And Newt being held up as the stand by the earth being uh, dead. So, right? just like uh, Brother uh, Ish just said... So, now, so here's Shu, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Now, this is Shoe the... Shu being the wind or the space in between... Right, in between. Newt and Gale. Yeah. Right, right mm -hmm. here. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so here so he goes. That's why we see him right? manifested as uh, stretching his arm like the space now, in between. Mm -hmm. This is the first depiction, whether or not the people of Kemet knew the world was round, this is their world, and it's uh, presented as a, as a globe. Oh, wait, right? wait, Brother Reggie, but there's people saying that the earth is flat. Um... Well, Are you saying our ancestors thought that the Earth was round? Yes, they conceptualized oh. that, but they used they also used geometry. They used sacred mm. geometry. They sacred see geometry. things see, see things that appear in nature. So it was a good hypothesis that the world was round, mm -hmm. or it was an egg, mm. right? So because they used sacred geometry. So whether it's an egg, right, or a womb, mm -hmm. right? These are things that are um, so you can get to a guess that the universe is round based on other things happening in nature. The biggest question I keep seeing is why can't we restore the pyramids power? If they were ancient power plants that supplied free energy, why is this technology lost? The answer to that question is a lot of our history is lost. Humanity is a lot older than what True. we've been told. The current species that we call human isn't the most intelligent or technological advanced or genetically superior race to ever walk this planet. The Law of One mentions how the pyramids used to be ancient healing centers put there by the Raw Collective to help with spiritual ascension. Higher dimensional beings who were here to watch over humanity and assist with the collective growth. But once the Orion group got involved, the elite cut off the people and made it so only the kings and queens can use it. That's when consciousness started to regress because we weren't using them for their full purpose. Humans were supposed to be healed to discover their purpose not as a third dimensional body but as a higher spirit of thought and unity with the one infinite creator. The halls of the Menti were then sealed off to human lineage, sealed off to earth until we reach 5D collectively. There was a corruption of the DNA of the root races of the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. Our DNA has lost its divine blueprint. The DNA codes that would allow 7 and 12 to assemble were shut down. Now there's a block between the physical body and the etheric body with the ones who are corrupted with this DNA. The sacred crystal heart was shattered. The human species was then forced to return to Earth to incarnate in the lowest density. Human consciousness has lost its awareness and relationship to Earth in higher dimensions. As we enter this new age of enlightenment, we will begin the long process of reclaiming and healing our original DNA. The Emerald Tablets were left here to remind us who we are. 
for us all to understand that our real life begins after this one ends. So if you realize, if you look at the, if you do a rewind on the geological clock of Giza, you find out that the Nile ran right up next to the pyramids. Now when you take magnetized crystal granite, which is the base, and you use running water underneath it, you create physiostatic electricity. Then the granite will pull the ions up into the pyramid, send them up the Grand Gallery. Now the Grand Gallery has these slots on each side. They could have been resonating rods, something to amp up, step up the electricity as it went up into the King's Chamber. In the King's Chamber, here's what's interesting. There's a box in there that they try to say it's a sarcophagus. It's not a sarcophagus. I'm six foot four. I can't fit in that box. You see what a real sarcophagus is. These things are massive. Not this little tiny box. The box is the exact dimensions, though, of the Ark of the Ark Covenant. Of the, Covenant. the Ark of the Covenant used to sit inside of that box. It was technology. It was a capacitor. And that would then give the extra boost and send the electricity up through the apex where there was a gold capstone. The obelisk, which are crystal, magnetized crystal granite, would capture that ambient wireless electricity and then pass it on to what they call jed pillars. They had these jeds. They're depicted in many hieroglyphs. People holding them and connecting them to light bulbs and electroplating devices in hieroglyphs, which I took everybody to go see. So if you realize... That makes sense about the wall art that we've seen in several videos where they're showing on, they're trying to figure out if this wall art is depicting them displaying electricity. It, we, I've seen it on, in several videos and the way he's describing it, it's like, bro, they, if, if this is true, if some kind of way we could decipher this and figure it out, bro, this means they were well, well ahead of their time. This changes everything if that's true. Yo, I'm back with a part two. Let's get what y'all think in the comments. Fact number four is, yeah, the pyramids weren't just big burial sites. Um, obviously, they could be used for other things. Wink, wink. Did you know that Egypt has 118 pyramids? But did you know that America has over 2,000? This conspiracy theory is guaranteed to blow your mind. It states that the Grand Canyon is a path to Egypt, and that's because there's pyramids, hieroglyphics, mummies, and tons of other Egyptian artifacts were found, and all the areas that are marked off actually mimic Orion's belt, and all the main points are named after Egyptian gods. And some of the biggest pyramids around the world and in the United States are actually hidden under mountains. Go ahead, look it up. The majority of the pyramids really start picking up along the eastern part of America. Which according to this map of what America really is, that's all ancient Mesopotamia and Babylon. Which makes sense why you find all these ancient hidden civilizations in the eastern parts of America. Yep. And why you have all these obelisks. Because America is the real Egypt and they've just been lying to you. What do you think? The word pyramid comes from the... Class and says, y'all may or may not like this one. Was there an Egypt in the Americas? All right, I'm about to snap on this one. The reason why I said learn to love is because in elementary, they literally teach you about all this grand in Egypt. But when it comes to the Americas, they only slightly tell you how they just kind of took it over and run the world now. And please don't be in the comments making this about race and skin and nationalities because a lot of y'all don't even know where y'all from. I'm just smart enough to ask questions. So let's get to the questions. Okay, so it's 2022 and you're learning that pyramids are all over the world, especially all over America. And even if the Grand Canyon doesn't have any pyramids, you wouldn't know because there's still civilizations that are alive today that walk and live amongst the creases of those mountains that we are not allowed to make contact with for whatever reason. So the smart people say that the Egyptians came over here many years ago and brought over their artifacts and all of that, yada, yada, yada. Even if that is true, okay, cool. Now, may I remind you, before you develop this colonizer program, man, what does Mexico, California, Arizona, and Illinois all have in common? It's all connected. They just put lines and colors on it and told you that they were very different and with different people. But before all that was going on, this was all Turtle Island. Who says, why are you bringing up Turtle Island? Because the pyramids in Mexico are older than the pyramids in Egypt. The pyramids in Mexico are older than the pyramids in Africa. So we already had our own now river, our own pyramids, our own sound machines, our own culture and language and ways of living. Why is it so hard to believe that the Americas ain't sacred? 
I feel extremely connected to my continent, and I know I have African descent in me too. Both are very beautiful and I'm proud of. Ask yourself this, if the Americans is not sacred with hidden history and power, why would the foreigners and governments go through so much difficulty to keep this land? Get tough to go home. Most of us is already home. A lot of us don't know where home is, but why won't these foreign gangs go back home? Because this is it. This is the big banger. This is the big baby. Because this is the real mu class and says. I just feel like everything is is a lie. I feel like it's a lie, man. Or it's or I'm being fed and 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 given information that has nothing to do with anything. It's all a lie. Finding out that Egypt could be potentially or could be was originally here. Like, I don't know, man. My whole brain is just warped. Seeing that map, seeing that map of the U.S. and having Egypt in the south blew my mind. I'm sorry. This is real proof that giants used to walk this earth. A lot of people believe that giants are no more than a fiction story that somebody made up. But there's real life proof across the entire world that proves they actually existed. Believe it or not, there's been a whole lot of giant bones found since the early 1800s. And scientists still can't figure out where they came from or how they even got there. There's even hidden CIA documents that talks about the existence of giants. And they probably hid the information because they don't want you to know how significant giants were in our past. Like in 1988, there was a giant finger found in Egypt. That one finger could explain how these pyramids actually got here. Or how these huge statues on Easter Island did. The existence of giants is even in the Bible. If you guys want to read this verse, go ahead and pause the video. So make sure you keep an open mind about the world we live on because all of these bones ended up randomly vanishing with small traces of their existence. Now, if you guys want to hear a true story about a giant found by the U.S. military, then be sure to comment 444 and I'll break down the story that was also hidden. Y'all stay conscious. This is. He said something that, that uh, it resonates with me. You know, keep an open mind. I think too often we decide to just. Ah, uh, that can't be true. That can't be real. Because it's so far from what we've been trained to think that anytime something is presented that's way off from what we think, we, we brush it off. We call it fake. We don't even give it a chance to do any research to it. So I think everybody should keep an open mind. That's not to say you have to believe, but keeping an open mind allows you to receive the information. What you choose to do with it after that is up to you. Lake Pyramid. This Lake Pyramid found in Northwest Nevada. They say America has no pyramids. Cap. This pyramid is 14,000 years old. Amazing. beautiful scenery. This is an ancient picture of the pyramid. This, said to be rock erosion, looks like a statue. Glyphs found at the pyramid are 14,000 years old. This skull was found on the beach 10,000 years old. We know the truth now. 
Some people believe that the pyramids of Giza were built by aliens. Yeah, some people think aliens built the pyramids, okay. You see, there's a Western bias in history and culture with slightly racist undertones that propagates the idea that Africans can't have built something so complex and grand. What? Whoa, 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 slow down. Questioning whether or not the old kingdom Egyptians had the ability to build the pyramids and inserting aliens has nothing to do with the color of their skin, but the type of technology and tools that they had at the time. I have absolutely no problem with Africans building the pyramids. You wanna know why? Because the pyramids are in Africa. And yet we have no problem believing that Europeans constructed amazing cathedrals with largely the same technology. Same technology? They didn't have the wheel, pulley, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't think anybody cares about the color of the skin of the people who built the pyramids. Way to go woke, bro. The earth is not a prison. The earth is a farm. And maintaining the fruits of the harvest of the earth is the basis for royal lineages. The entire focus of ancient megalithic structures was to the heavens. The specific geometry pointed towards the alignment of the solstice, as well as certain stars and planets in the sky. Structures like the Great Pyramids were calendars in stone. Their purpose was to identify and catalog mysterious gravitational anomalies. These gravitational anomalies will create distortions of light in the stars and planets, and over thousands of years the anomalies were written down and recorded to the point where they could be predicted. A royal lineage or ruling class with the ability to predict the arrival of interdimensional entities would be as if gods. These families and priesthoods oversaw the extraction of various tissue samples as well as blood and DNA under the cover of ritualized solstice festivals and sacrificial offerings to the gods. In truth, all you can do is find false, drop it and get rid of it, and eventually when you can't get rid of any more false, what you're left with is the truth. How much false can you find? Because there's lots in history. If I was looking around the internet and came across the images of the 1893 Chicago World Exposition, and it blew my mind because it looked like ancient Rome in the middle of downtown Chicago. And as I looked at it further, well, here's another one in Philadelphia, here's another one in St. Louis, in Buffalo, in San Francisco, and then as soon as they were done, they tore them all down and threw them in the garbage. That just told me there's something wrong with all of these. The story of the expositions is, is a gigantic lie. And I think it's so huge of a lie because I think they're right at a bridge point when so many things about the 1800s that seem strange and weird, right as this sort of period ends of unbelievable strangeness and all of a sudden these fairs spring up all over the world with impossible buildings buildings we're talking about which are colossal structures chicago built 700 acres of fair in supposedly less than two years st louis built 1200 acres of exposition buildings one of the buildings in chicago the manufacturer's building would house 300,000 people there's a giant statue in the middle of a lagoon it was called the golden lady and it was known as the Statue of the Republic. It was 65 feet tall. They say it was covered in gold leaves that had copper underneath, but others speculate it was actually made out of solid gold. So you're talking 65 foot high, potentially solid gold statue. We're talking giant structures and looking like ancient Rome with towers and domes and columns and the most fine ornate pieces to them in these record unbelievable times. Then as soon as they're done, chuck them in the garbage. Like Jackson Park is a swamp. So supposedly they had to drive down tens of thousands of wooden stakes in order to support the weight of everything. They dug out massive lagoons, lakes. They had a canal system that ran through the entire exposition. They also had an above ground electric train, an electric train. Well, where's the electricity coming from? That's running around the park. They had a moving walkway down by the shore. Not enough people are asking, where does this technology come from? Just to frame it. If I'm not mistaken, the Chicago Fair was the first time people had seen electric light. Tesla's the one who got the uh, electricity contract for the Chicago Exposition. And it was certainly more than all of the lights anyway that were in New York City at the time Jeez. were at the Chicago Exposition. And it must have been mind-blowing for most of those people who had only seen gaslight or candlelight at night to see that city lit up in such a way. Again, it's 1901. We are told, whether it's true or not, the idea of being able to electrically do anything hasn't been around that long. And this fair is bizarre. This is supposed to be Tesla's fair, where he managed to somehow move electricity from Niagara Falls to Buffalo for the fair. No one's really explained how he actually did that. Uh, and at the middle of the fair is a 395-foot-high electrical tower, on top of which, of course, is a female golden statue called the Goddess of Light. And this thing was lit up by, some suggest, half a million electric light bulbs. 
again, when you look at the photos of this thing, it's just, where do they really get the power from? I mean, think of what it would take today if you had a place with no electricity and no way to pipe it in, the generators that would have to be built. For example, there's a building that went up for the Barcelona Exposition in 1888. It was claimed to be the fastest built building in the world, 5,000 square meters, capacity for 2,000 guests, 600 rooms, 30 apartments, and it was supposed to be built in 53 days. This is supposed to be a time of horse and buggy. The two-year building times are actually impossible unless the two most likely theories would be either A, they had a technology that they're not supposed to have, and it really was built in that time frame. Even if they built them, they had to build them out of marble and stone in record time, or the buildings were already there. They'd been there for hundreds or thousands of years, fixed up, refurbished, repainted, hence the term whitewashed, which is the term that was used for the Chicago Exposition, which was paint all the buildings with this brand new spray paint that they had just developed to spray paint all the buildings in record time. So you couldn't tell if anything was old or anything was new. How long did these things tend to stay open? When they built these things, supposedly over two years, which is the narrative, how long were they there for oh, six open months. six months for the public to come? And then what was amazing, for example, in St. Louis, two days after the fair ended, they brought in a demolition team from Chicago with explosives and blew the thing up. They actually used dynamite to blow it up, and they say threw it in landfills. The things like the World Fairs shows there was a time in our past, and even not that far in our past, where humans seem to be at a completely higher level. Human living and human knowledge were constructed into the buildings using cymatics, using sacred geometry. These fairs, they're so important to study because the history that we know right now as history was invented at the time these fairs were going on. One of their underlying nefarious purposes was to teach a historical narrative to the population that they were supposed to believe and agree with. And scarily, the world we're walking into today is in some way has its origins during the time of the find truth. All you can do is find false, drop it, and get The thing about our human race is we pride ourselves on being an intelligent human race. When in all actuality, with all the information we hear and gather about previous civilizations, they were ahead of us, well more advanced than us, and they make us look like, it's several words I want to use, but just not too smart. The purpose of our magazine is to tell the truth about what happened to our country and our continents before Columbus. And if it shows that there were white Vikings here, and there were, we tell that. And if it shows that there were Asians here visiting, Chinese here visiting Mexico, we'll tell about that. And if there were blacks here, we have to tell that too. That's all part of our heritage. And I think it's, I think it's thrilling and exciting for, for all of us. I th it, it's remarkable. So what we're telling you, I mean, this is just in a nutshell, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of this, not just in our magazine. Believe me, you're going to be seeing this on TV. It, it's, it's bound to burst out because it's now it's really known the archaeological community. You've had four of these major impacts that the black people have made to the Americas, not only before Columbus was born, but before even Spain or Italy existed. That's, that's the kind of, of roots that are in this country. And by knowing that, and the more you know about it, it's an empowerment. You're, you're really rude. You you're, have got a heritage which is more than slavery. Sure, there was slavery, but that's not all. That's a small part of it. Long before that, there's a heritage of kings, seafarers, religious missionaries, and they were all here. But it happened so long ago, there's just so little of it left. And that's basically, that's basically my story. Um, what connects it up is even the word more, because it's pronounced differently in different parts, of, even of Africa. And they call themselves more, mu, mur. There's all variations of that, so that even the name Muir, America. I'll leave you with one thing which is really interesting, too, that relates to this. The Mali Kingdom, part of their religion, around 900 AD, they believed in a god called Vodun. Vodun or Vodan. And they said Vodan was this great sailor who came across the sea, and he taught the Yoruba and the Benin how to work with metals. And he was their man god, as it were. He was their, like their founding father, their George Washington, was Vodun. And he brought tablets. He said they brought tablets, which he taught people how to read. Vodun was his name. Vodun and Vodun. Across the ocean, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, amongst the what they call the Kisha Maya or the Lowland Maya that I talked about, they have a tradition 
of a god they called Vodan. Same name who brought tablets across the sea to tell them how to work metals and so on. So here we're dealing with the same tradition. This is something which is not made up or interpretive. It's the actual fact. It's the truth. So the more of these you have, like I say, the greater the sense of empowerment. So I'm going to stop here because I think these photographs are better than anything I can say. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to interrupt the action here. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to turn the slide off, I guess. Stitch this with a fact so ridiculous you didn't believe it until you looked it up yourself. I'll go first. We're all familiar with the Atlantic slave trade, hopefully. I mean, they're, God willing, they're trying to rewrite history up in here. That's a whole other conversation. That's not what I stitched for. I stitched because the slave trade was so traumatizing that it changed the migration patterns of all sharks for the rest of ever. Really? Forever, is what I meant to say. Sharks used to follow the slave boats because people were just being thrown over so often or jumping off mm. than rather make the actual, you know, destination. There are people that got sick, there are people that died on the way, and they would just throw them overboard. There's even instances where the people, the slave traders killed people just for insurance money because they were just possessions. This resulted in so much food for the sharks that they migrate the same way up until this day.